Hey guys, just like that, we're live. How are ya? I thought I'd pop on tonight. It's been a busy few days and I thought I would just go ahead and do a live vlog tonight. Just hang out, chit chat with you guys. I just got back from the gym, both me and Matt. And honestly, I came through the door and I sat down and I started painting and then I'm like, you know what? I should just do, like I said, a live vlog tonight and catch up with you guys. Hopefully the service is gonna be okay in here. Hopefully you can see and hear me okay. Juliana, how are you? Hi, Shirley. Oh my gosh, Juliana, it's so nice to see you on here. Juliana is my niece all the way from Nova Scotia back in Canada, so please say hello to Juliana. Hi, Linda, all the way from California. What are you ladies all up to tonight? I'm glad you guys can see me and uh, we can hang out for a little bit. So yes, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, the night before last night, I put up a vlog and I shared with you guys what I did on Saturday, which was get to spend the day with one of you guys, right? By the way, if you hear my dog in the background, um, they're a little bit, a bit excited because we just came home and they got treats. Oh gosh, I just said that word out loud. So they might get a little excited, all right? Uh, you were trying to sell your baby brother. Oh, I can't imagine why. Hey, Valerie, how are you? So uh, I got to do that on Saturday. Got to meet up with Chris, who saw the vlog from Saturday. Hey, Teresa, nice to see you. I got to visit you, Teresa, soon. I'll be on to visit you soon. Man, did you guys see the snow that we had? I posted on my Facebook page um, that we had so much snow this weekend. It was like a blizzard. I swear it felt like I, we jumped in the time machine and we went backwards. And um, yeah, there were snow plows everywhere and it just got really, really insanely a lot of snow. Did you guys see those pictures that came out of up here in Erie, but it was more or less, I think on the Erie side that might be closer to New York, which were only a half an hour guys from, from um, New York. But I don't know if you guys saw it or not, where all the homes were completely uh, covered in all the like the ice and stuff that came off of. Let me turn this so you guys can see what I'm working on. Um, when when all the ice, like it got blown on the houses. Oh my goodness. Hey Charlotte, how are you? Oh my gosh, Jerry. I caught the last thing you said there. I think it said greetings from, and all I saw was was. Um, like palm trees. So now you're making me really, really <laughs> jealous. Oh my gosh. Too funny. Uh, I think that's it. When you live somewhere that's non-tropical, that's when you really appreciate it. And uh, hey, Robin, I'm glad you're on live. Absolutely. Let's hang out for a little bit and chit chat. What are you up to tonight? But yeah, it really makes you appreciate. I would say this about um, business in my, you guys know I have my second channel that I started in January and it's my, just my free creative business chat over coffee every single morning. And I was saying to them about, I think it was yesterday we were talking about something and you don't know, you don't really appreciate the good days unless you have the bad days, right? And that's in life in general. That's also in business, <laughs> but it's also weather, okay? Debbie says, you're so inspiring. Debbie, I just do what I do, and I'm just glad that there are other people out there just like me as well that just says, yep, I totally get what you're laying down. I get what you're doing there. So you gotta have the bad days to know the good days, right? That's, that's what I tell myself. So right now, I just know, and I'm okay with it being um, really snowy right now because I know that groundhog said that we're gonna have some spring very, very soon. All right, so I've got my trust in the groundhog. <laughs> so what do you get? What have you guys been working on? Anything interesting? Anything that, uh, any good projects? I was gonna share with you guys a little bit about a little bit um, of what I found junkin' on Saturday when I got to go out with Chris. Oh my gosh. And well, she didn't know I was coming, but of course it was all was arranged through her daughters. And um when I got there, you know, her daughters gave me a gift from their family and I'll share it with you guys because it's pretty cool because they are crafty as well. Yes, that's a pillow behind me right there. Let me make sure I don't have any paint on my hands. Like that's ever gonna happen. Um, yeah, so that's the other thing. Thank you for reminding me, by the way. Oh, good, yay. Oh, we well, hang out for a little bit before you go to bed, absolutely. Yeah, these are the pillows, and I had a second one, and I gave it to my friend Clara when she was here for a visit, and it's the matching one, <laughs> but there's a set of these, and this is my artwork. It's fun that, um, you know, that we live in an age 
where you can do paintings and you can do beautiful art and designs and you can create custom stuff for around your house, right? Do it in the style that you like. So of course you guys know that I'm a shabby, whimsical kind of painter. And so I did a whole whole bunch of cactuses and I'm feeling like a, like doing a whole other cactus series coming on in a bit of a different style. But um, yeah, so I did these and I should have posted the link over here, but I'll just tell you guys where it is. If you go to junkmonkeypaint.com and you click clothing, everything is under there with the exception of two pillows. It's all clothing right now. So I just called it clothing. But if you go over there, you will um, see all kinds of like, you know, thrifter, junker, picker, picker girl shirts. And you'll start, see, you'll see me start wearing them as well. And um, yeah, you guys might be, uh, you might want to get some. They're really cool. All right. And they're all junk monkey. So I worked with um, graphic artists to get them designed for us. And so they are junk monkey designs. Sometimes I just want to not sometimes a lot of times i just want to paint and it doesn't always have to be big furniture i just, sometimes i just want to be able to sit down not get going on a big project but rather this is the time when i start to i'm usually in my robe and i will before i go to bed <laughs> sit here and just paint for a little bit are you guys like that as well where you just whatever mood you're in Sometimes you want to paint big stuff and sometimes you want to paint small stuff. Totally up to you, right? That's pretty cool. What do you guys think so far? Can you see it coming to life? So I love building my paintings in layers and I think this is a tip for somebody out there who also loves to paint that if you feel like you paint and you feel like it's very, like it looks kind of primary, and it doesn't, you know, you just feel like, ah, oh, it just feels like a kid did it. And I just, you know, it doesn't feel like bigger, as big as I want it to be. I'm telling you, when you build your layers up, that makes a big difference. So I love texture. Oh, and if Sharon's on here, Sharon just um, wrote me tonight. And she said she got a bunch of my last batch of shabby paintings. And she loved them, which was awesome. Donna says, oh, you're a cartoon lover. Nice. I totally can appreciate some colorful cartoons and stuff like that. Absolutely. I'm trying to think now, what color do I want these flowers? I'm really thinking about going with a, a cool blue. Let me see here. Let me think. I'll mix up the color here. Let's see what we get. So what did you guys get into today? Tell me as you're popping on. Anything interesting going down? I did see that the clocks are going, let me get it, spring ahead, fall back, right? That's how I remember. Spring ahead, fall back. And I um, I did see that we're, is it next weekend? I think it is, that it's going to happen. You know what, I'm gonna change that flower up there a little bit. Um, that we are going to be into the season where it's gonna be lighter in the evening, right guys? Is that correct? Did I get that right? I always get that mixed up. Uh, I love long evenings. For me, uh, long evenings when I get to paint outside, the evenings are warm and I don't know, it just feels like I get more done. When it gets dark, I get really claustrophobic. I feel like, no, I'm not ready for it to be over with just yet. Not ready for the day to be over with just yet, right? And when, when it gets dark, I just feel like, okay, day's over. I don't know. I like it when it gets when it's light out and it's light out till like 10 o'clock at night. Remember last summer we were painting outside and uh, doing stuff like, do you remember when I gave you guys that training on how to, how to, um, hey, Helvia, Helvia, right? Nice to see you here. Um, do you guys remember last summer when we did, the, we were doing the paint club during the summer months and we were out there, I remember one night teaching you guys how to use, how to spray Junk Monkey. Do you guys remember? We did that training and um, it was dark. I mean, it was dark. We went live until it was dark and there was not, she had nothing more to give. She was like, okay, we're done. Sonia, the moon is out. It's time, time to give it up. So if you're just joining me, I'm just having fun tonight painting. I'm going to share with you guys, as soon as I can put the paintbrush down here, 
um, a little bit, a, li a few little junk pieces that I found. What'd you guys think of that store that we went in on Saturday? I'd never been there before. That was that one that was like, it was called like garage sale. Ready for spring, Jackie says. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it was an eerie and they just called it garage, garage sale. I think that's what it was, right? They just it didn't even have, the store didn't even have a name. It was just garage sale. That was it. Do you remember when I said like, that's the way to attract the a junker is to just like, just, we don't even care what your store name is. Just call it garage sale, okay? And we're gonna be there because we're crazy like that. But it was good. I went in and there was no prices on anything. So that was a little bit like, oh gosh, because I'm somebody who likes to see prices on stuff. And we were like, okay, let's get up here and see what this is gonna cost. And so she was like, Chris was like, I'll go first. And she, she went first and he only charged her $4 for what she had. And he charged me $4 for what I had. I don't know, maybe everything costs $4. But um, it's, it was just like, it truly was like going uh, to a garage sale and everything there was just cheap, right? And you had to look up everywhere you went, just kind of looking for stuff up, 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 up high on the, um, what do you call it? Up on the, the big, big racks that were there. But pretty cool, I'd go back again. One of those places where you never know what you're going to find, you know? Cool. Pretty cool, she's coming together. Can you see my flowers starting to emerge? Bit by bit, we are going to get there. All right, let me show you real quick. I gotta let that layer dry. We've got to let that layer dry before we can do much more anyhow. So why don't we just stop there? All right, so let me show you what I got when I was there and I'll show you what they gave me as well. So got to celebrate uh, Chris's birthday with her and have breakfast at the Cracker Barrel. Okay, so everything I got was $4 in total. All right, so this is the first thing I got. <laughs> I just, I think it goes this way. It still has a little hanger on the back of it. Look, I thought this was so cool, right? It has my initial. This is perfect for here in my art room, um, you know, in my personalized space right here. So I love that. And I thought it was really cool that it had this little little piece of, um, I don't know what it is, like a piece of wood, I guess. And that little scroll work right there. So I don't know, I kind of like that. But I also like freshening things up and putting a little bit of paint onto it. So I might do it, I'm honestly, I might, because I'm just thinking, you know, even though this is fake wood, it's brownie frowny, right? Oh, uh, yes it is, absolutely, Linda. There you go, it's a nod to Sean, absolutely. So I think I might um, maybe put it in a solid color because if I do that, knowing that it's brownie frowny, okay, on the bottom, I could distress it a little bit. You know what, this would be a really good tutorial in. I know what it would be a good tutorial. I'm gonna do this live when I do it um, because somebody asked me the other day about how do you distress and you show what the other color is underneath it, right? Oh, Juliana Sadie would totally love that, wouldn't she? Yes. <laughs> the other thing is if you're inspired by this and you wanna make your own, you know when you go to Walmart, they have those wooden blocks and they're usually like 99 cents or so. If you get one that's just the plain 99 cent black block, all you do is paint it, stencil it, add something right here that you found if you wanna embellish it with, right? And you could totally do your own knockoff version. So anyway, that was my first little thing that I saw and grabbed and took with me. So we'll paint that one, clean it up and put it on my wall here around my art room. Okay, next thing I got, I told you, I can't help it. I am drawn to whimsical, shabby, just happy kind of stuff, okay? And if I see moon and stars, well, you guys know I have stars back there, stars, polka dots, stripes, um, fun colors, that is what I am drawn to and so, this is just like a, I don't know what it's made of, metal tin of some sort, you know, and it's just a little, it still has the little zip tag on it, like almost like nobody used it. But I thought that would be so sweet as well to put on my wall. So if you have a bunch of these things together, does this look backwards to you guys? It might, right? Cool, right? I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put that on my wall as well. <laughs> Linda says, like, I can paint it to be a banana. Yes, I could. <laughs> oh, I love it. Too funny. There you go. Is it a moon? Is it a banana? 
Is it a moon? Is it a banana? <laughs> Aww. I had a blast. I have to tell you that um, as I get to meet you guys, you guys are awesome. Just good, good people. I always will say that the Banana Bunch family, the Banana Bunch people are just good people. Good eggs, as Matt likes to say. You're just a good egg, right? Just, I don't know, just have good personality, salt of the earth, just good, genuine people. So hospitable and um, just so kind. I swear, it feels like when I meet you guys, you guys say, I feel like I know you already. But when I meet you as well, like you're, I feel like, I think that your vibe definitely attracts your tribe. If you ever heard that before, like the vibe that you give off is usually what you pull around you. And so when I meet you guys, it is just like meeting somebody else that's like, I feel like we've been friends for a long time, right? You just pick up from like where you meet somebody because it just feels so, so down to earth and just so natural. Does that make sense? And so we had a blast. Um, and I told her, I'm going to come see her again. She lives on the New York side, uh, the other side of Pennsylvania, on the New York side of um, across the border. And she was telling me, <laughs> she was telling me that um, she has a, it's called an indoor flea market and it's open year round. So I said that once that the, the, you know, the weather gets a little bit better and I can do some more traveling, then I'm going to go over and we're going to do, um, do that place that she's been telling me about. Okay. So this one right here, I did take this one home. You guys saw in the vlog, life is beautiful. So I was saying in the vlog that once I got home, if I want to, I can glaze over here and it'll just kind of fill in, fill in any sort of scratches and stuff like this. Diana got her first order of junk monkey paint. Yay. And she loves the paint. You are going to be addicted. I am so sorry for you. I'm so sorry for those people around you because I know how addicting and how fun it can be. You will want to paint everything and you will see things in a whole new light. It's like you've got your love goggles on, okay? So you're gonna be looking at people's trash. Yes, just tell your spouse or people around you, just get used to it, okay? This is what I do now. Everything I see, I want to paint. <laughs> but it's so much fun and it keeps us out of trouble, right? There could be worse things that we could be into, right? Besides painting and junking and rescuing things that somebody else threw away and now we see potential in. So um, I definitely saw potential in this and I'm also somebody who loves positivity. I love, I'm a person whose glass is half full versus half empty. And so I do love the life is beautiful that is on here and I think I could probably find a really nice um, picture take something off my phone that I've taken many, many uh, pictures of, right? I need to get them off my phone and put in here. So on the back, this says that it originally came from Pier 1 and look how much it was, $17, guys, $17. And this was one of the few things in my box that I got for a grand total of four, right? So what do you think I should do? Should I just, do you think I should just dress it up a little bit and clean it up for any sort of like buff out any sort of scratches and do my glaze? Or do you think that... <laughs> I'm sorry, Rebecca. I'm so sorry for you, but it will not, never stop, okay? She says that now she's like walking through her house looking for stuff that she can paint <laughs> and DIY, right? Oh, too funny. Tracy says repaint. So this is my question. Do you think I should keep as is? Or Chris in the video said, you know what? You could as well um, if you want to change it up. Like I could paint this in Bahama Jade and distress the edges and have black edging and do a really fun color. Cream would even be pretty over this, to be honest with you. If I put cream over all of this and let a bit of the black come through, what do you guys think? Would you paint it, leave as is? What are your thoughts? But to the person who donated this, all I can say is if they did not like it, like did they not know that they could just jump monkey right over it, that they could paint that sucker up and you know just change it up versus having to give it away, right? You guys wanna see me repaint it? Okay, then we might just have to do that. So I did take this thing home here as well because I don't know what it is. Somebody wrote on the video, you guys wrote in, you said maybe it's one of those, um, what do you call it? Where like if you put something into it and you, it's not like, a, it's not called brick and mortar. What's, what's it called? Where, but I don't know if it is or not because it's wood. It might be. I mean, it doesn't look like it's ever been used before, but you know when you, one of those things where you have the little, is that what it's called? That might be what it is, Jarrett. Okay, you guys are all saying, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead with that one. You're all spelling it differently though, but you know what I'm talking about where you grind up this stuff. Mortal, mortar, mortal, <laughs> mortar, and is it called, what is that, pestle? <laughs> I don't know what that is, but yeah, it's one of those things where you crush things up, right? Robin, that's exactly right. We're just gonna go with ostrich egg holder, okay? 
mortar and pestle. Mortar and pestle? Am I saying that right? Pestle? Okay, all right. All right. If I'm supposed to say it differently. Sound it out for me, please. Oh, okay. Patty says, yes, I'm pronouncing it right. All right. Mortal, mortar, mortal, mortar, mortar, and pestle. Mortar is the squishy thing. Good to know. What is that, Linda? I don't even know what that is, what you just wrote. So anyway, that would be my best guess, but it's solid wood and it was nice and clean. So I thought I would put that in a fun color and distress it and make it look cool. But you know what I saw it being used as? Oh, it's, yes, it's what's the pharmacist used to like beat up like, you know, prescription pills and stuff like that. Matt used to have one, I think it was like a little tiny marble one where it was just somebody gifted it to him and he would crush garlic up inside of it. But I think I'm gonna use this for maybe like a paper clip holder. So on my desk and put paper clips in there, something like that. Yeah, he's upstairs, Maggie. If he was here, he'd be like, seriously, you should know what that is. I don't know what that is, but I'm, you guys know what it is. I always say I have smart friends. So what do you think of that idea? Just repurposing it, cleaning it up, and using it for like, it just it's nice and round, so I could see like paper clips in there, you know, just grabbing them out like that. So I think that would be a good one. And then the last thing that I got in there was these here, which I thought for a second, maybe they went together because after I found this guy, then I found these two like overturned and I'm like, oh, maybe this will be a clue as to what it is. But when I found this, these are very similar. They have to be, because look, they have the holes in the, in the, maybe somebody made these. Guys, you know what? I think these might be homemade. You know why? Because look, there's a pencil mark on the bottom. Does, it, does that not look like the work of a carpenter, like somebody in his workshop and he probably made these? So maybe that's where that one came from as well because they all match, right? But these here are probably homemade candle holders. That looks like candle holders will go in there. And so again, same idea, nice chunky wood. So I thought I would paint. I'd make them a little distressed, shabby looking right there. Patty says it looks like they were turned on a wood lathe. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, he's, he's got some good stuff uh, been sent to the house. Debbie says that's where they were. Maybe the other one is for a big pillar candle. And it could be too. So I thought these were really cool, nice chunky, but we'll just change them up, right? I could glaze them and just intensify the wood look, but you know me, I do like, I do like paint. Surprise, surprise, if you're just tuning in, Sonia likes paint, so we're probably gonna paint them. I think that would be really cool. So what do you guys think? Those are my few things. And I ended up paying $4 for all of that. So I had a great time. And this is why I say like, you think about what you, you pay for an experience. When I go junkin' and thriftin', if I leave with one thing and I paid 50 cents for it, I still feel like, you know, like I went in and I had a great experience. Even if I leave empty handed, just going in and looking at stuff, like look at those roller skates that were there and the old cameras that you saw in there. I mean, somebody who collects cameras or stages photos with cameras, that would have been their dream haul right there. And being able to go out and you don't have to spend a ton of money, but just getting out, right? If you have nowhere to go, sometimes you ever do that, just jump in your car on a Sunday and drive and see what you find that might be open on a Sunday and pop in. And by the time you leave, you're like, I'm so glad we stopped. Maybe you had a chat with a cashier or somebody local there. Hey, Becca from California. Um, you know, you just kind of like walked around a little bit and maybe you found something, maybe you didn't, but it you spend a great time there and then you drive back home and it feels good, right? Oh, you like records? That's what I said when I saw those records. Somebody would love to be here for sure because yeah, my son has a, um, a record player, but it is, it's not the old record player. It's one of the new ones. Isn't it funny how history re uh, repeats itself? He got it for Christmas a couple years ago and it's a modern throwback to an old record player and it just looks like an old suitcase and he takes the top off of it and so you know there are there are like groups out there that will put out not just um you know just not do their music on itunes or cds or anything like that but they do the throwback to the records Ah, uh, thank you very much robin she says press the like button peace thank you for the love i appreciate you you guys support me your love, I always say, my YouTube channel, these channels run on your love. So thank you for giving me a heart, absolutely. Do you really? Your daughter has a record player too? Oh my goodness. 
Maybe, how old's your, how old's your daughter, Jim? <laughs> I'll bring Riley. There'll be like two peas in a pod. So this is one of the things that they gave me. Look at this, pretty cool, right? Jarrett says, son takes record covers and makes them into wall art. Very cool. Very nice. Oh, uh, because you love it because it's a throwback to what you grew up with. That's awesome. So these are, so her one daughter make one daughter makes these right here. Okay, she's got some time yet, Jen. <laughs> I can't wait to meet your family though, seriously. Um, so she takes the cat bags and stuff. Okay, and I say and stuff because get this. Oh, Diana, her daughter has one too. Isn't that funny? What was old is new again, right? Okay, so that was the cat chow. This is the cat chow, okay? She cleans the bags and sews them, guys. Look what she does. She sews them. And now the next time I'm, I'm at like Aldi shopping or something like that, I can take these with me. Okay, and the one that's holding my stuff, can you see what it says? It says hog feed, all right? It says hog feed. So these are repurposed dog food bags. Have you guys ever seen these before? Debbie says she does them from chicken feed bags. Okay, so this one right here says hog feed. Do you know what she told me? That she, that I know, right? They, they're so awesome. Um, that she has a, I don't think it's a pot-bellied pig, but she has a pet pig. And this is why she has hog food bags, right? Think about that. She has a pet pig. So we had a great chat because I just found that so fascinating. Um, and I was asking her what the pig's personality was like, right? Which apparently he likes to say hello. Becca says, that's cool. They're, oh, Maggie says they were popular where I lived in Texas. Nice. Okay, so if you guys have been following me for a while, the next thing that they gave me, you might know. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, yeah, Sonia does say that. Look what they, what they did. They made me a mug. Okay, it's a yam on the back. And you guys know, I always say, I am what I am, like it or leave it. I am what I am. <laughs> and look what she did, okay? And then on the back, it says, it's all relative. <laughs> it's all relative to what you know, all right? I am what I am. Oh my gosh. So if you're in my, uh, in my, my other channel, Grow with Sonya Miller, which every morning I'm there at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, You'll see me drinking out of this one tomorrow morning. I just thought it was so thoughtful. And uh, I've never, ever, I can't say I ever found a mug that said that. Joni says, we make them out of rabbit pellet bags. Oh my goodness. See, I'd never seen that before. So there you go. Maybe somebody else out there is like me and going, that's a good idea. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is the other thing. Now, is this not amazing? Okay. I'm going to show you. Make sure I get it all upright. Look at this. Next thing they gifted me. I'm serious. I went for Chris's birthday and I felt like it was mine by the time I left. All right. They gave me a beautiful handmade from, from sea glass. All right. On the beach. She's just like me. Always looking down at her feet. <laughs> when you, oh, just as I always, I am what I am like Popeye. Oh, too funny. I used to watch Popeye. I like Popeye. Look at the big that she found on here with the driftwood. So a beautiful little, I'm probably gonna put this in my window actually. I just need to find a suction cup and then go ahead and stick it on the window. Oh, Juliana says, mom would like that. She's talking about my sister, Anna Banana. Yes, she would. Absolutely. If this goes missing when my sister, Anna Banana comes to visit Juliana, I'll know exactly who it was, right? But I'm gonna go find a nice um, like pack of suction cups at Walmart and put this up in my window. I think it would be beautiful. And I'm gonna tell her, like I already told her, I'm gonna tell you that didn't she hit the jackpot when she found all these pieces? Because look how big they are. Look, there's the, the brown amber glass. Can you see this? This was like the top of the, um, like maybe an old, I don't know, I would guess like an old 7-Up bottle. Do you remember when 7-Up when was in those green bottles? Something similar to that. And then all these pieces of glass. Growing up on, on the island, we would find lots of sea glass, but if you found a piece this big, man, you hit the jackpot. So I felt like I hit the jackpot with this. Isn't this sweet? So beautiful. I'm gonna keep this out because I'm gonna go in the morning and put that in my window. I'll show you a picture. Maybe I'll catch it with the light coming through, right? 
Jen says, I know literally nothing about sea glass. Yes. So what happens is, I mean, if you go to Lake Erie, I think that's where they got it because they're also near Lake Erie as well, where they live on the New York side. But, um, I mean, Lake Erie, you might as well, when I look at it, it looks like it's an ocean, right? It literally looks like you're looking out. If you've never been to the ocean, go to Lake Erie or somewhat, something similar, and it'll give you the same sort of feeling of just being in front of this giant, massive body of water. But what happens is, um, you know, with all the stuff that's in the lake or in the ocean, and it washes up, it just gets eroded by all the, the rocks and all the pebbles, right? When you think about it, it gets like thrown in a tumbler, in nature's tumbler, right? It like tumbles in with the waves, and then it just beats against it, itself. And so what happens is you get all these pieces of what could, I mean, you think about all this, I mean, you just never know what you're finding. Think about the um, shipwrecks that have happened or just random garbage that's made its way into the ocean, things like that, that come back, right? It washes back up. And so I found sea glass, sea glass that is parts of like old plates that has pattern on it. That's amazing when you can find plates that have like little bits of sea glass that are the bottoms of broken pieces of plates but it has like pretty blue pattern on it or something like that. And then, um, you know, you find a lot of, a lot of the green stuff because or something like this, like, you know, glass bottles and things like that. And this could be anything. This could be, I mean, obviously these are all parts of bottles of some sort um, that just eroded over time. And so you, the, you know, this one is a little bit less eroded. You can really still see this. And this is a big chunk, but what happens is the longer it would sit there, the smoother it would get. And then before you know it, it'll just be a little green piece of sea glass and it just becomes so soft and smooth and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. When I go home, um, especially in the summertime, it's when I usually make it home. So walking along the beach, oh yeah, I'm like always looking down. You know what, it's so funny, I just turned this over and can you see what it says on the back of there? This was part of a bottle that said quart onto it. Isn't that neat? Ah, somebody drank out of these bottles. <laughs> And then here I am, enjoying them hanging from my window. <laughs> oh, Sharon's on here. I was just talking about you. Your ears must have been burning. I said that you received um, your last batch of artwork. Suze, uh, sorry, Sharon is one of my big shabby flower collectors in the house. And she scored in my last batch of paintings, what was it, three of the paintings, Sharon. And they went down to Miami, Florida. And so she just got them tonight. I hope they bring you happiness and joy. I always keep a few of them for myself. So like, this is the kind of, these are a few that I've done that I keep for myself, but I'm always playing with it. Just like I'm here tonight working on stuff. Um, okay, and so this is the last thing. Seriously, was it her birthday or was it my birthday, right? Um, so speaking of rocks, this is what they gave me right here. Blue is hard to find, but yes, red is exceptionally rare. As far as we could tell here in Texas on the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, everything gets washed up all different places. I'm always thinking, oh, she says four. She scored four of my last collection. She is a serious collector and I can't wait to see her shabby wall of flowers. Um, what was I just saying about the, the glass? Oh my gosh. I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah. Basically that I have dreams of one day of going to the beach and uncovering pirate treasure or something like that with my uh, metal detector. Yeah, I do. I am that person that goes to the beach and if I see somebody out metal detecting, I'll walk up and be like, Oh, so you find anything good today? <laughs> Matt probably loves that. Don't you? That I walk up to random people and ask them, did you find anything good? And they usually tell me they're finding bottle tabs and things like that. But I have a dream and just really think about finding a pirate coin or something like that. Matt has been watching faithfully. What's the I, Oak Island? What's it called? Something Oak Island? Oak Island treasures? No. The Curse of Oak Island. The Curse of Oak Island. Yes. Yeah, have you seen that meme where there's a skeleton in the chair going, me waiting for something to, act, to happen on the Curse of Oak Island? That's Matt watching and me going, seriously, have they it's found not anything the yet? It's the journey. I know, I know. I'm just an impatient person. I just want to, like, show me the goods. Show me the goods. Jerry says her hubby is watching it now. Can I tell you something? When I was saying to Matt the other day, like, I do find it fascinating how they dig below the surface. Did you guys see that episode? where like this was mind blowing to me. Okay. Picture 
a pipe that they that they put that in the earth. I don't even know. Yeah. It was a pipe, right, to get down to this level that they could the that ones, they right? could see, right? And the pipe was just a pipe. Okay, I like I'm picturing a stove. Well, maybe a little bit bigger than a stove pipe, but enough for a human to fit in. Okay. And what they did, you guys see this one where the diver went down. I don't know how far it was down. Okay. Do you remember? It was like 110 feet or so. Okay. I don't know how you remember this stuff. Went down. When it got to that level, that layer where they could kind of detect like what was down there, like think about like an ultrasound, okay? Where you can kind of, you know, make out what's in there and they wanted to know what was down on this level. They sent this diver in and he, I mean, you gotta be, you gotta be committed to do this because he could only fit, he couldn't turn around in the pipe, not even knowing what was down there. He put his body in the pipe, had to be careful that his respirator didn't tangle on any like, trees or twigs or anything like that. Had to, once you go down, you can't come back, right? You have to get down to the bottom to this, where this little pocket was, enough to be able to turn around and then swim back up through the pipe that I swear was no bigger than the size of a stove chimney, chimney okay? Like, totally claustrophobic. Jim was like, oh no, I was dying. I'm like, no, no, he's not gonna do this, is he? He's, I mean, if you can Google it, just hold your breath the entire time because they're talking about, you know, what happens if, if he gets stuck? You can't save him from the pipe. How are you going to get him out of the pipe? And then when he goes down there, what the heck is down below? And when he started moving down there, everything turned muddy and he was just kind of feeling around with his hands. Yeah, right? And then he had to get turned around and they were hoping that there was no like logs across it or anything like that because he gets tangled. He's stuck down there. And I just don't know how you put yourself through a pipe that you can't get turned around and you have no idea what's at the end. And once you start, you can't turn back and you go and then you come back. I nearly died. I nearly died. That was the most stressful TV episode I think I ever watched in my life. Did you see it? <laughs> Nancy says, no, thank you. I bet you if you YouTube that and like, you know, Oak Island diver small pipe, is he going to die? <laughs> like, I'm telling you, man, that was rough. But they do some wild stuff there. And so, yeah, my sister lives in Nova Scotia. And so I'm from, I'm from Newfoundland, which is um, the province. It's the island. You would have to take the ferry from Nova Scotia to get to Newfoundland and go like about seven hours north on a ferry. But my sister moved to Nova Scotia and Julianne, I'm coming to visit, right? So when I come up, I gotta see if I can go over there. Cause I, my sister told me that you can go and you can actually, I know Becca, it is, it's really, it's very, it's really cool. I gotta tell you, it is really cool. But at the same time, I'm like, come on, find something. Find the treasure, the find the treasure. Wait list for tours, you know. There's a two year wait list for tours. Yeah, that's what your sister told us. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll just go peek through the fence. I got Zoom, okay? on my camera. But yeah, I'm like, how cool of a vlog would that be to be able to go and take you guys over to, there to see it? So when I go home, I'll check out and see um, and see what we can do. Sonia gets arrested. Well, yeah, Sonia gets arrested for jumping the fence. Well, maybe if I contact them and tell them that, you know what, I got a whole ton of people that need to know what you're doing, okay? Let me vlog it, okay? <laughs> Let me come in, I'll find new say, viewers for you. Say we got the most watched show on cable. What's that? That's what they'll say. Yeah, we yeah. don't need you. Yeah, we're not, we're not <laughs> but you don't know the Banana Bunch family. I'm telling you, they'll be committed to watching once they really know what you're doing inside this fence. So please let me in. Mm -hmm. Who thinks I should try it? <laughs> so these were the two rocks that they gave me. Um, it says, and I love the positive quotes on it. <laughs> Jerry says, the tribe wants to go. Yeah, we're here. Let us in. So this is the first saying. It says, sometimes the grass is greener on the other side because it's fake. Dun, dun, dun. Sometimes the grass is greener on the other side because it's fake. <laughs> yeah. I saw that, Jen. That's funny. We'll go pick in there. They'll be like, you can't take this home with you, girl. But I brought my, my metal detector and everything. Who out there has a metal detector? Do you have your phone on Do Not Disturb? I do. Okay. Okay, why? Because I want to take the garbage out. 
Oh, oh, yeah, 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 I did put on Do Not Disturb. It yeah. always happens that when I'm live, yeah, if I, I don't remember. Walk, walk past security camera. And, and trigger it, you're all yeah. good. Um, Nancy says she wants to go up there. I've never gone to um, PEI, Prince Edward Island, to see the whole Anna Green Gables thing. My sister did last summer. So another reason why I need to go visit my sister. Okay, she moved to a province that's got some really cool stuff going down. So I got to go check that out. And I'll vlog it, I promise. But I did grow up watching Anna Green Gables, and I love it. Matt, Matt drives the getaway car. <laughs> we'll show up in the white van, right? <laughs> Who are these weirdos? And look at this one, okay? Are you prepared? Okay, it's like your fortune cookie, all right? This is, this is your fortune, all right? One day or day one. It's your decision. One day, I'll do it. Or day one, I'm going to do it. It's your decision. So uh, we were laughing because... Oh, Jackie, you read all the books? Yeah, I didn't read the books, but I I couldn't tell you how many times I watched the TV series. Love, love, loved it. I just remember as a little girl sitting in front of the TV and mom saying, Sonia, you got to go to bed now because you got school in the morning. And I'd be like, Cause, let me just watch 15 more minutes to the episode, mom. I need to know. I need to know. That was so good, wasn't it? Oh, my goodness. I should go back and watch that. Now, I know that there is a new remake of it on, I think it's Netflix. Have anybody seen that? You did. Becca says, I love that I watch Anne with an E. I have not seen that one. See, I'm going to have to maybe check that one out. I'm going to have to do that just because, just because I love Anna Green Gables, but I wondered what it would be like to watch the new one. So if you're watching it and you think it's good, Sarah says it's wonderful. Okay, I'll check it out then. Absolutely. See, Jerry says, can't watch the new one. I know, I know that feeling of when you're like so used to something and you're wondering like, is it anywhere gonna even come close? But maybe it's, if it's, it's its own thing, right? So did one day or day one, it's your decision, all right? Pretty cool. We were laughing because she said that she sells these painted rocks and uh, somebody, do you remember she was saying that? Yeah. And she said, people are like, what, you sell rocks? Yes. <laughs> I, guess they, I guess they forgot about pet rocks during the 70s. <clears throat> was pet rocks really a thing? Yeah. What did they do rocks. with them? You had a pet rock. Well, I made my own, but yeah. they had ones where they would sell them, right? Did you? What would you do? Like, do, like, ladybugs and stuff like that? Uh, no, my, I can remember mine. Mine was still around the house. Did you guys have pet after rocks? after I came back from the Marine Corps, it was red, had blue stripes. Really? Yeah. I've never had a pet rock. You look kind of like a lizard. <laughs> really? Yes. It was a triangular shape. Rock. Linda, Linda says she remembers the pet rocks. They came in a little carrier? What? Yeah. Fat Bird Fine says I had a pet rock. Cindy had a pet rock. Am I the only person that never had, a pet, had a pet rock? No. I grew up on an island in the, in the north, okay? We did different things. They sold pet rocks in the stores. You had rocks big enough where you could put saddles on the ones up there. Are you kidding me? They sold pet rocks in stores. You don't. Oh. No, man. I never ever we heard of pet rocks. Once, so I had to pay. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Maggie says the guy who came up with the idea made a fortune. Yeah, it's just like when they bottled water and all that good stuff. Adonis says my dad had one. It came in a nest in a box. Are you kidding me? No way. Oh my gosh. Don't forget your Becca answer. said, oh, I forgot about those two. Yes, we can show them those. Uh, but, well, you can just put them in the fridge. You're good. I just had them laying right there. Um, they also gave me a dozen fresh eggs. These right here, Sharon, these are ones that I'm working on. These are other building my layers up. Oh my gosh, I just put this into my paint. Ah! I'm going to wash it. Get at the Lysol wipes. I'm working on a new bunch of flowers and uh when i came on i was talking to you guys and painting a little bit and telling you about how i'm working on them and building them up in layers to make them look fine and fabulous jerry says one year at a plant sale i sold beautiful beach rocks did you really you sold them all for a buck a piece well i gotta tell you i thought these were awesome because they for me i really like these because they had they have the positive sayings on them and i'm like these are the perfect little paperweights for like papers on my desk and stuff like that so you just never know right when you wonder is there a market out there for stuff there is stuff i'm telling you that people will be like that's pretty cool right i want that so now that i've painted the back of my bag because i put it into my palette that's okay these bags are wipeable so it's all good uh where are my lysol wipes what'd i do with them time to get out the crud cutter Maybe I'll just paint off the back of this. 
use this for my palette, right? Poor Jen. Uh-oh, I missed that, Linda. Is it because she's a farm girl? <laughs> Do we need to show her the island life? Do we need to show her the coastal life? You do, Donna. Oh my gosh. Did you guys just see Donna's comment? She says she paints rocks and hides them when she goes to Universal. Are you kidding me? Down in Florida, Universal, what's it called? Universal Studios. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I see what you guys are talking about there. Too funny. Um, that is so cool. I find rocks every now and then that have uh, really cool stuff on. There's like a lot of people who do rock groups, rock groups. I thought about doing that around Ligonier for people who come to visit the junk monkey and all the paint that we do, like they could, when they're in the shop, they could paint a rock and put it somewhere around the town or do something like that. I don't know. I was just thinking about doing it. We could do them. You know what? I just realized something. We could do junk monkey rocks and send them out and put them everywhere. How cool would that be? Start a website or do or put something on the website where you basically paint a rock, leave a rock. That's really cool. I used to do geocaching. Do you guys know what that is? Sharon says, I want them too. Well, stay tuned because these will all be done. Um, did you guys ever do geocaching before? Do you guys know what I'm talking about when I say that? Because I told you, I am a treasure hunter. You guys think that I just look for a chunk, but oh no, I, I truly want to find pirate treasure, okay? There's something about the hunt that I love. I will go morel mushroom hunting, you know, with Matt's family and the thrill of the hunt. I love, love that. But geocaching is where people hide treasures all over the place. They're all over the world. If somebody on here is doing it. Oh, Jackie says she used to do it. It's fun. Oh, you did hope? Did you really? You've done that? See, I'm telling you, that's why I say there's always somebody out there that is totally into the same thing that you are. You just got to make sure you tell them so you can find other people that are your tribe of people. So geocaching, there's a whole site devoted to it. Um, you know, for example, you can do your own or you can um, find other people's. And basically you provide clues. You know, it might be stuff like the longitude, latitude, and you use a, um, what do you call it? You use a, what's it called? Oh my gosh, a geo, what am I talking about here? You know what I'm talking about. Somebody say it. The device you use where you can follow it to the coordinates. It'll come to me momentarily. But um, you can also leave clues like, you know, look past the tree, down by the rock, you know, turn to the left and there you will stop. Like something like that might be part of it. It is truly a treasure hunt. And then you find other people's uh, things. Yes, you go to the woods. Absolutely. Preferably not a place where there's snakes or anything like that. All right. But you go to the woods and you open up somebody's treasure chest, basically. It could be anything. It could be a box or anything like they buried. They've, they've I don't know, they put up in a tree hole, anything like that. And um, I've opened them before where people have had cameras. I can't help but wonder, like, I guess they come back and they must take their camera, their disposable camera, and they bring it and they get it, um, get the film developed. And I've taken pictures of myself, like, oh, I, you know, because they'll say, if you find this, please take a picture of yourself. And so I just think, how cool, you know, how cool is that to go back to your little treasure chest? You can log online and see, see how many people have found it. And there's also things like gold coins and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Oh, Hope says you left a keychain that says uh, best friends forever. Yes, people leave coupons to local restaurants. Um, I'm just trying to think all kinds of stuff you find in there, right? You're supposed to take something and you're supposed to leave something. And um, yeah, so they're just really, really interesting. So if you look up geo geocaching, there's a website dedicated to it. And then you can put in your zip code and find all the ones that have been stashed near you. And that is a very fun hobby to do, especially um, like springtime as it gets into summer, because if you want to take a hike, but you want to make it a little bit more adventurous, that is an awesome, awesome thing. Oh, that is so good. Maybe I'll have to, you know what? Since I moved to Titusville, I haven't checked. If Jackie's on here, she'll probably know. Hey, Jackie, Jackie, I saw you on here earlier. If you're still here, we'll have to try some of that. We'll have to like go geocaching in the woods. How about that? Sound like fun? You should check it out if you have not. <clears throat> so if you too have hopes and dreams of being a treasure hunter, all right, it doesn't just have to stop at thrift finds. It can go further. There are other things as well to, um, to fill your time with. <laughs> Love it. 
So guys, that is my little haul. You guys told me I should paint it, so I will do that. All right. Oh, Jackie says, yes. Heck yeah, let's do that this summer then. Absolutely. Nice. So I'm gonna take off of here. I'm gonna let my paint layers dry. I'll continue to work on these. And don't forget that, yes, if you go to junkmonkeypaint.com for all of us, for all the Banana Bunch family out there that's been saying, Sonia, will you please get us some t-shirts? Will you please get us some um, sweatshirts? And there's tank tops and there's a whole bunch of stuff there, guys. Um, if you just go to junkmonkeypaint.com and you click clothing, you'll see all the swag. And I've been working with a couple different graphic designers and I'll continue to add fun designs, but some of them um, like art say things like picker girl or junker picker thrifter, uh, junk queen, all kinds of stuff. And then you have the standard like junk monkey paint company. Um, so there's some really fun designs and I just announced it today. And a lot of you guys already have been over there picking up something. So when you do, you'll have to take a picture of yourself and post it over in junk monkey paint projects. Okay. Oh, Linda says I ordered two pillows. So make sure when you take your picture, when you get them, you take a picture and you post it, okay? So we can see it. That's gonna be so awesome. And I can't wait. You guys know that I've been painting for a long time and this is kind of a nice outlet, right? Dale and Linda says, hi, Sonia. Woke up from a, not, from a nap and we'll watch again later. Absolutely, tune in when you can. And I'm gonna go and I'm going to relax for a little bit now and before I go to bed, but I'll be up again tomorrow morning and you guys know I'll be over on my second channel at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time live. This week we're talking about video. So if you're growing your creative business, it's just a free community that I set up where every morning we meet up over coffee and it's really cool because I'm getting to meet lots of creative people, creative forces around the world and we just talk business and you know, we all got dreams and hopes and some of us wanna have our own business. And so it's fun to connect with other people, right? You just feel like you're not alone and um, everybody can help each other. So it's been a really good thing. So come hang out there if you want. All right, my friends, I'll see you again tomorrow um, over here on the vlog and it might be a live vlog again tomorrow. So hopefully you like a little bit of both. Jen says, I was just listening to replay when you popped on live, you are everywhere. I am everywhere. Just when you think I'm not looking, I'm looking. Thank you, Fat Bird Finds, for the love, for the hearts. I see your hearts and I accept them. <laughs> oh my gosh, all that talking now, I need to drink some water. All right, guys, relax for the rest of your evening and I'll see you guys again tomorrow. All right, take care and do something that makes you happy, will ya? See ya.